welcome class this is going to be one of my biggest nights now because this is the first time when I'm coming across the board actually across in front of the camera directly live okay uh, jokes apart and in this case uh, firstly we'll be talking about uh, the part of immunology lectures that I'm going to cover in my future slides now in this particular video we'll be focusing on complement system okay so complement system is one of the major uh, responses that we can have among the immune responses now what we know about the immune responses according to the different type of response that our body can have against pathogens or against invading pathogens there are can be two different type of responses okay so immune response can be divided into two parts and one of them is called say let me change the color let us change the no say first uh, is called uh, cell med mediated or cellular response another one is called humoral humoral response okay shaky board whatever now there are two different type of responses can be found one is called the cellular response another one is called the humoral response now among the cellular response uh, it is mediated with as the name suggests mediated with cells now what what type of cell that we can find in this cellular response the cells called uh, T cells remember it, they are called uh, not B cells mostly they are T cells macrophages okay dendritic cells and also uh, macrophages dendritic cells T cells and also T cells means the lymphocytic cells T lymphocytes and also we are having uh, uh, the cells like natural killer cell okay so we are having this variety of cells uh, in the cellular mode of immune response on the other hand in the humoral type of response which is not directly mediated by cells remember this is not directly mediated by cells but uh, in a way or other it is depending upon the several cells like T cells T helper cells for the proper functioning so among this humoral part this is actually depending upon uh, cells called B cells because this B cells is going to produce these B cells are actually going to produce antibodies right so they will produce antibodies okay and also uh, they depends upon this antibody mostly for this kind of humoral response and also there are components that we are called complement complements now this complement means these are small chemical molecules mostly proteins or polypeptide molecules sometimes it is made up with uh, other uh, molecules like proteoglycan thing or made up with lipid molecules but mostly protein molecules okay so these are mostly proteins okay so these are the two different type of uh, responses that we can have in the humoral particularly in this particular lecture we'll be talking about this complement system okay and how this complement proteins work and how they help us to establish the response against pathogens okay okay so let us uh, talk about this complement system okay now in, in this complements uh, they are mostly made up with proteins or proteins like what kind of proteins so let me write some names of the proteins there are different components like uh, say p uh, sorry not P actually complement means C sorry complement means C C stands for complement now there are different types of C molecules like uh, C1 uh, there is C1 there is C2 there is C3 there is C5 and so on okay so these are the major complements that you can find C1 the C1 complement is further divided into P uh, different to P, Q, and S. Okay, so this several parts uh, from C1, then C2, C3, and C5, and so on and so forth. 
Now each of these complements, these are proteins. Okay. Now these complement proteins are having a particular characteristic. Now the characteristic is that these complement proteins are uh, having a multi-domain protein. Okay. For example, this C1, it is a hexameric protein, and so on C2, C3, C5. So they are multi-domain proteins, and these proteins have a particular region through which this protein can be cut. Okay. Now each of the protein after cutting we can have two different segments. One is A segment, another one is B segment. Now this A segment and B segment are uh, denoted with small a and small b. So for example, say this is a complement. So this is a complement for example. So say this is C2. Okay. For example, like a complement. Now this complement when it is clipped. Now this complement it's a multimeric. I can tell you, or multi sub subdomain come in and they will interact. So whenever we are going to draw some structure like this C2, C3, C5, it is not a single unit structure. It is a complex structure. Okay. Now when we cleave this, we can generate two different parts. So after cleaving it, we can generate two different parts. One is say this this region, another one is say this region. Okay. The smaller part is called a segment and the larger part is called the B segment okay so small a and small B now the larger part always most of the cases are B smaller parts most of the cases are A but there is an exception the exception is at this C2 well, now what happens in case of C2 if we divide C2 sorry in this case the example is for C2 now for C2 there is a switching switching is that in case of C2 the larger segment is the A segment. So this is a variation. It is A and this will be B. But rest of the cases, that means rest of the complements like C3, C5, C4, in all those rest of the complements, generally small B part is the bigger one and small A part is the uh, small one. So let me draw here again. Let me draw these things here. For C2 it is uh, like that. For C3, uh, C4 or C5, uh, the thing is like that, larger part and smaller part. Now the larger part denotes B and the smaller part denotes small a. So it is denoted like C3B or C3A or say C3, uh, C4B, C4A, it's like that. Okay, but the exception is C2 because in case of C2, Instead of the larger part, it is a smaller part which is tagged as B, okay, and vice versa. Now, uh, this is the basic characteristic. Another important characteristic of these complement proteins is that this large subunit of these complements, like uh, B subunit for rest of the part except for C2, because C2 is the exception. Now, the large subunit of those proteins are tend to attach with the bacterial cell surface okay so they are going to attach with the bacterial cell surface okay so say so let me take pencil here so this is the large and this is the small now this large unit is going to attach with the bacterial cell surface so this is called the opsonin in a sense so this act as a opsonins. Now they are going to attach with the bacterial cell surface. So if I draw a bacterial cell here, say uh, blue color. So this is a bacterial cell. These are the antigens that are processing by the bacterial cells. Now onto this region, this black colored thing, C B or C3 B or C4 B, whatever, this thing is going to attach. So this is the B components. Now B components are going to attach with the bacterial cell. So let me demonstrate from this side. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Now this B is going to be attached with the bacterial cell. Okay. On the other hand, these uh, small units are not going to attach directly with the bacterial antigen or the pathogenic antigen. Instead, these small subunits are going to be released outside. Now they will produce a signal. So this cause some chemical effect or this call on some chemical mediators onto the tissue or cell where the bacteria is invading. Now they are called anaphylotoxin. 
So the effect of A part are anaphylotoxin. Rather, the effect of smaller degraded part are the anaphylotoxic part. But the larger part always tend to attach with the pathogenic region. Now a question can come into your mind that what will happen to the large part for C2? Because C2 is having a large part which is A. But in case ours we discussed that generally large part is R B, so B are trains to attach. But in case of C2, it is a large part. Uh, a is the large part. So in case of C2, A is going to attach. So let us draw this again. So in case of C2, so it is C2. This is say C3. So in case of C2, large part is going to be attached. But in case of C3, again in all case large part. So in case of C2, it is C2A which is going to be attached. In case of C3, it is C3B which is going to be attached. Okay. So this is how the larger part is going to be attached with the bacterial pathogen and recognizing it, marking it, and then it can be engulfed by other bacteria, other uh, cells like macrophages or dendritic cells will engulf them or phagocytes them. But on the other hand, the smaller parts are like B uh, for C2 and for others A. Now the smaller part are going to call upon some chemical mediators or chemical signaling. They are called anaphylotoxin. There are other effects or cellular effects or physiological effects associated with these smaller parts. We are going to see it later. Okay, so this is a basic overview of the proteins that we are dealing in, uh, with in the complement system. Now after that, in subsequent lectures, we will be talking about each of the complement system. So there are actually three different type of complement system. Okay, so let us uh, write it here. Mm, say this is the region for our writing. So this is a complement. There are three different type of complement system and these types are say actually two major two major type one is the classical pathway another one is let me change the color another one is called alternative alternative pathway and among the classical pathway, there is another pathway which is uh, discovered uh, after all the, all of these pathways. It is called MBL or Manose Binding Lectin Pathway. So there are these three different types of pathways we are going to deal with in case of our uh, complement activation and complement pathways. Classical alternative MBL. Now the classical pathway is the first pathway was to be discovered so that is called classical at the very beginning. Then the alternative one is uh, the alternative type uh, from the classical one which is discovered later. It is called alternative and after many years another pathway was discovered where lectin uh, are found because this lectin and mannose uh, residues that are present in bacteria they are going to attach. So this third kind of pathway is just resembling the type or sequence of classical pathway. Okay, so we can submerge it. We can learn this both together. On the other hand, we'll learn alternative pathway later. An alternative pathway, according to your learning ability, will be harder than this classical and MBL pathway. So we'll be first discussing about classical pathway along with MBL pathway. Then we'll be talking about the alternative pathway. Okay, so uh, this is it. I hope it will help you and after uh, this discussion we will be talking about classical and MBL together then we will be talking about the alternative pathway. Okay. Thank you.